let's assume that you have created a bridge. You have a router board in your network. And basically, after creating the bridge, you started to add interfaces to it. Then your users start sending traffic, probably a high amount of traffic. And then you see that the CPU is starting to go up. So what is happening? How can we optimize that configuration? First of all, we need to understand that the bridge can be running on software or can be running on hardware. And there is a big difference in that. So for example, if we have a device like an RB2011 or RB3011, RB4011, those devices will have a built-in Swiss chip. So when I mention a hardware approach or software approach, basically we are telling where the switching logic is going to happen. So for example, if I have a device, over here we're going to have the CPU, somewhere here we have the interfaces, and those interfaces will be connected to a switch chip. So we're using hardware, basically, if we have traffic coming in here and going out there, the switching logic is going to happen inside the chip. It's never going to hit the CPU. So this is going to be more efficient. So that means that we need to understand the architecture of the device. Every device in MyRotic.com is going to have a document that is called the block diagram showing how the internal components are connected. And then we can take advantage from that design to get the highest performance possible. So let's see how that is going to look like. If we go to that link, I have posted the link just below the video, you will get this section, Bridge Hardware Offloading. This is the official MyRotic documentation. You can see that after Router OS 641, it's possible to switch multiple ports by using the built-in switch chip. All the switching logic is going to happen in that small chip. You can see here different device models and the features that are supported by those devices. This is a regular router board. You can see that the switching logic is happening in that level, in hardware. It's never going to reach the CPU. But how we know if our device has a switch chip in which interfaces are connected to it? By checking the block diagram. So if I go here to myrotic.com, for example, hardware, and if I pick any of the routers, so let's go here to Ethernet routers, Let's say that I'm going with uh, this one, RB3011. So every device in this area here is going to have, under supports and downloads, is going to have this file, block diagram. So now if I open that file, this is going to show me how the device looks internally. So we can see that the RB3011 has 10 interfaces from 1 to 10. And we can see that that device has two switch chips. So that means that, for example, if you are creating a bridge in an RB3011, if you want to take advantage of the hardware capabilities, you have to add interfaces that are connected to that switch chip only. For example, if I create the bridge LAN, I will add either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is going to allow me to perform the switching process in that chip. If, for example, I create a bridge, but I add interfaces from multiple switch chips, that is going to work using software. Because, for example, if we have packets coming in Ether 4 and going out Ether 6, that traffic must go through the CPU and then it's going to leave out of Ether 6. So in this case, we'll be sending traffic to the CPU. If you want to take advantage of the switching capabilities, we are going to add interfaces connected to the same switch chip. So that's quite important. 
If I only have five interfaces and I add those, for example, and I start sending a lot of traffic, the CPU is going to be pretty high. But if I have those interfaces there, if we have traffic between devices connecting that same network, everything is going to remain in that switch chip. CPU usage, pretty low because the traffic is never going to reach the actual CPU in that device. This is pretty important, something that um, we have seen in many microtech implementation devices going pretty high in CPU usage because of the way how we're creating bridges. We need to add only the interfaces that are connected to the same switch port. If for any reason, for example, you require more than five interfaces, then a best option is to look for a switch because the switches will have all the interfaces connected to the chip. So in that case, we can have all the interfaces in the same bridge. So let's see one of the switches. So if I go to switches here, so let's see like that one, for example. Let's check the block diagram. So you can see here that all those interfaces are connected to the switch chip. So remember, if your device has not enough interfaces connected to a switch chip, a best option is to use a switch because that device is intended to perform switching. With the other devices, routers, they have a switch chip, but probably the amount of interfaces is not going to be enough in some scenarios. So now I'm going to show you an RB4011 that is running here in my office. And let's see how we can identify if the switching is happening using hardware or using software. So I have here an RB4011. You can see that I have one bridge and I have several interfaces added to it. If I check the flags, you can see here that I have this H. So basically that means hardware of load. So we have traffic going from iter8 to iter10 that is going to be managed in the switch chip. You can see that I also have some wireless interfaces and they don't have the hardware of load flag. And that is because those are not connected to the switch chip. If I am sending traffic from iter6, for example, to a device connected in the wireless interface, that is going to pass through the CPU because wireless interfaces are not connected to the switch chip. So that's quite important. So this is how you can check if the process is happening in the switch chip or it's happening in the CPU. For the cloud hosted router, obviously that's a virtual device. So there is no switch chip on those. So if we see the bridge that we created in the previous class and I check the ports, you can see that all those ports are lacking that flag. Because in this case, we are using the CPU that has been allocated to that virtual router. So for CHRs, we are not going to have a switch chip. So that hardware option is not going to be there. For the RB411, we are going to get the flag. If I open one of the port members, you can see that we have this option, hardware of load. If I don't want to use the switch chip for any specific reason, I can simply disable that. And now that is going to disappear. You can see that edge is gone. So the traffic is going to be sent to the CPU. If I want to use hardware of load, I need to make sure that this is enabled. That value is enabled by default. And this is how we can check if the switching is happening in a hardware level. Thank you. And I see you in the next one.